Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095, ba Basic Algebra. In this video, we're going to look at section 5.8, which is formulas and problem solving. When it comes to some applications, we need to have some previous knowledge before we can begin to solve it. And a lot of times, we need formulas. Some examples of formulas that we should be somewhat familiar with is the formulas for area. And when it comes to area, always keep in mind that it has square units. And hopefully, we'll see why that is. If we're looking for the area of a rectangle, we get A equals length times width. Or the area of a rectangle equals the length times width. And we just write that as A equals LW, where maybe this is the length and that's the width. For a square, well, we know a square has all four sides the same. And we find area by one side times the other when it comes to squares and rectangles. Well, if all the sides are the same, the side times the side is the side squared. So the area of a square is the side squared. And you see that square, that's why we have unit squared. One side times another, a unit times a unit will give me squared units. And that's the same here. Length times width is a unit of measurement times a unit of measurement, squared units. When it comes to a triangle, a triangle is essentially half a square. So if we took one length or one side times the other and then take half of it, that is the area of a triangle. So the area equals 1 half the base times the height. Since it's a different shape, we give it different variables to denote which side. And lastly, we should be familiar with the area of a circle. And the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. And hopefully, we remember the radius is the center to any edge of our circle. Squared units with area. When we deal with perimeter, well, perimeter is just the distance around. It is a single distance. So maybe it's measured in meters or feet or inches, some other unit. But it's just a single unit because we're only adding the units together. So perimeter of a rectangle is twice the length and twice the width because we have two widths and two lengths. So we two times each of those, and we add them together. Since a square has all the same sides, we're going to add up all four equal sides. So we had four times the side. For the perimeter of a triangle, it is the distance around. So we have one leg plus another plus the last. There's only three uh, sides to a triangle. Circumference is a little bit different. Hopefully, we're, uh, we recall this formula. To find the circumference, or the distance around, and that's what circumference means of a circle, is 2 times pi, which is just an irrational number, times the radius. Or, well, twice the radius, that's the same thing as the diameter. The radius is from the center to an edge. The diameter is all the way across from one edge to the other, passing through the center. It's twice the radius. So we could actually use this formula, depending on if we're given information in terms of radius or diameter. These are equivalent values. So we should be familiar with those. A couple others we should be familiar with is volume. Now, volume has units that are cubed because volume is three dimensions. Length times width times height is how we find the volume of a rectangle or a rectangular box. And if we're dealing with a cube, a cube is like a square but in three dimensions. All sides are the same. So its length, width, and height are all the same dimension. So we use s. Volume of a cube is s times s times s or s Cubed. So you should be familiar with these. And you can see why we would have cube units. A unit times a unit times a unit is a unit cubed, whether those are inches or meters or, or what have you. All right, some other formulas that we should be familiar with. Distance is one that we deal with on a regular basis. Maybe um, a version of this that we see every day but maybe not make that connection is when we drive a car. When we look at our speedometer, that is a version of this formula. Our rate is distance over time. And we'll actually see how to manipulate some of these to uh, hopefully see those relationships. Uh, another one we deal with is simple interest, where interest equals principal times rate times time. Now, just because we have the same variable, it doesn't necessarily mean they have the same value. These are different formulas, and they're used in different applications. So interest uh, is how much money we would get if we invest a principal at a particular rate, which is generally a percent, times time, the duration that we are gaining that uh, interest rate. 
Some other ones that we've seen in a previous video, we looked at uh, converting degrees from Fahrenheit to Celsius or vice versa. Um, these are actually the same formula, just manipulated. If I solve this formula for f, I will end up getting this formula here. So if you only have one or can only remember one, use the skills you have to solve for a variable and undo the math, and you'll have the other. Another uh, formula that we frequently come across is force. And force equals mass times acceleration. So these just uh, represent variables that we might be using in the formula. So we should uh, familiarize ourselves with these if we don't already have them committed to memory. So let's see how we can algebraically manipulate them. Because depending on the formula we're using and the application in which it applies, we might be asked to solve for a different variable of that formula. So here we have the simple interest equation. Interest equals principal times rate times time. And we're asked to solve it for t, which represents time. So what we do is we use those properties of equality and we undo the math. We want to get the variable that we wish to solve for by itself. So I'm going to undo the math. The first thing I have to do is identify what's happening here. Principal times rate times time. I am multiplying the time, the variable I want to solve for t, by principal and rate. So I can undo multiplication with division. And we're going to use that property of equality. Well, instead of multiplying by principal and rate, I'm going to divide by principal and rate. What I do to one side, I do to the other. And now we can just reduce this like a fraction. Anything, regardless of what it is, divided by itself reduces to 1. Anything divided by itself reduces to 1. So if we see that 1 times 1 times t, well, that's just t. And what we have over here is what t is is interest divided by principal and rate together. So we solve this for t. So we just use those properties of equality to solve for a variable. And sometimes that can be uh, helpful if we need to apply this now. Let's say we were asked to solve for time of an interest equation. Well, we can solve this for time right here without the numbers in it, and then just plug the numbers in that I'm given and do the math to find out what t is. Now, this one here, it says solve perimeter of a rectangle for L. This is where we have to know that formula for the perimeter of a rectangle. If we don't have it committed to memory and it's not available for us to look up, we're going to be in trouble. So we have to remember the perimeter of a rectangle is twice the length plus twice the width. That's how we find the perimeter of a rectangle. If we have that committed to memory, it makes our life a lot easier. Now, to solve it for L, that's this variable here, I need to undo the math to get this by itself. So I'm going to undo this addition with subtraction. Using the property of equality, I have to do to one side what I did to the other. So I have p minus 2w's. Nothing I can do there. I can't simplify. They're not like terms. But here, 2w minus 2w, no more w's over there. I undid the math. So now I have p minus 2w equals 2l. I identify I got l by itself, but it still has a coefficient. It's not truly by itself. So I have to undo this multiplication. So I'm going to undo it with division. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. And since I divided this side by 2, I have to divide this whole side by 2, both terms. And if we reduce that, 2 over 2 is 1. So I get L equals p minus 2w divided by 2. Let me rewrite that this way. L equals p minus 2w divided by 2. And you can leave it like that. Now, let's say you're given uh, the perimeter or, yeah, and the width. You can plug those values in and simplify this. And you'll know what the length is. So it's one step instead of many steps doing this all over again. So hopefully we're familiar with the formulas. And we know uh, our rules of doing to one side what we do to the other, those properties of equality. All right, this one says solve for r using the circumference, the circumference formula. Well, we have to know what the circumference formula is. Now, if you go back in the video, you'll see I gave you two examples. But this one asks us for r. So when it comes to circumference, I want to use the one that has the variable of r. 
So 2 pi times the radius. I don't want to use the diameter times pi. So to solve this for r, it's very similar to this previous example. I look at it and say it's 2 times the irrational number pi times r. So it's just multiplication. We can undo that with division, 2 and pi. What I do to one side, I do to the other. So this reduces to 1. That reduces to 1. 1 times 1 times r is just r. So r equals this value, the circumference divided by 2 times pi. And hopefully, we remember pi is 3.14. Uh, it actually is irrational. Those decimals would continue. So we use that symbol to represent that. So <clears throat> let's look at another one here. And this is one that I'm actually going to leave for you to attempt yourself. It says, on June 16th of 2014, it was 85 degrees Fahrenheit in Iron Mountain, Michigan. What was the temperature in Celsius? So I want you to choose the appropriate formula. If you need to go back in the video, please do so. And find that temperature. All right, And know which equation to use. And I'll give you the answer so you can make sure that you use the proper one and you know how to manipulate the formula. The temperature was 29.4 repeating degrees Celsius. Remember those units. It's very important. All right, <clears throat> let's look at an application here. It says the perimeter of an equilateral triangle is 7 inches more than the parameter of a square. The side of the triangle is 5 inches longer than the side of the square. Find the length of the side of the triangle. Now, the first time we read it was just to understand the words. If you don't know what an equilateral triangle is, you can't go any further until you know. Well, an equilateral triangle, and the key word here is equal, means that all sides of that triangle have the same length. That is the definition of an equilateral triangle. All right, so I drew some illustrations here so we could see it. This is an equilateral triangle. All sides are the same. And generally, when we describe triangles, we use a, b, and c as its sides. I put a here, but since all sides are the same length, I could say, well, this is also a, and this is also a. All right, <clears throat> we're also told something about perimeter of a triangle and a square. So these are two formulas that I have to know before I can do this problem. So I'm going to write them out. The perimeter of a triangle, and I'm going to write p of a triangle, equals a plus a plus a. It's the distance around. Well, that's just three a's. For a square, its perimeter would be all four sides. And since the sides are all the same, 4s is the perimeter of a square. So this is the information that I have to know before I can actually start solving the question. So let's uh, go back and reread it and see what information is given. It says the perimeter of an equilateral triangle is 7 inches more than the perimeter of a square. Let's just stop for a moment and take that given information and apply it to what we know. 3a is my perimeter of a triangle. And that is 7 more than the perimeter of the square. So I'm starting to build that, but it's the given information that I have. If I read the next sentence, it says the side of the triangle is 5 inches longer than the side of the square. Well, this, is, this represents the side of my triangle. And it tells me that it is 5 more than the side of the square. So this a is 5 more than the side of the square. So the side of the square plus 5 more. This is the same thing. And now we could just set those equal, 7 plus 4s. Because if 3a is equal to 7 plus 4s, then 3 times the side of the triangle plus 5 more, 5 more than the side of the triangle, is 7 plus 4s. This is an equation that you know how to solve, you can solve. So let's go ahead and do that. We've seen many of these before in previous videos. If I distribute this, and I'll do it up here, 3 times s, 3 times 5, we're using that distributive property, equals 7 plus 4s. And now I can just get my variable on one side of the equation. I'm going to subtract 3s from both sides. 
And this is going to go away, and it's going to leave me with 15 equals 7 plus 4s minus 3s. Well, that's only 1s, 7 plus s. And now I can get s by itself. I can undo this addition by subtracting that 7. Get it out of there. Move it to the other side. 15 minus 7 is 8. 7 minus 7 is 0, plus s is just s. So I found that the side of the square is 8. Now, we have to do two things here. I always stress that we use units. And I say, OK, this is a side, which is a single unit. And we're dealing with inches. So I know this is 8 inches. Does this answer the question? So we go back and we read it, and it says, the perimeter of that equilateral triangle is 7 inches more than the perimeter of the square. And the side of the triangle is 5 longer than the side of the square. Find the length of the side of the triangle. The triangle, what I found, represents the side of the square. So I'm not there yet. So I have to go back and maybe assess, what did I do here? If I look at this piece right here, a was the same thing as s plus 5. And that's the statement there. It says the side of the triangle A is 5 more than s. So this is equal to that. <clears throat> Let me write it right here. A is 5 more than s. So now that I know this, I can plug that in. 8 plus 5 is 13. So A equals 13 inches. This represents the side of the triangle. The question asks, find the length of the side of the triangle. We answered the question. And hopefully it makes sense. Is this value uh, 5 more than the side of the square? Yes, it is. Is the area, or excuse me, the perimeter of this 7 more? Well, let's find out. Let's check our work. 13 plus 13 plus 13 is 39. This, if this distance is 8, 8 times 4, the perimeter of that, is going to give me 32. Is this, is this value 7 more than that value? Just like it says, the perimeter of this is 7 more than that. And that's a true statement. 32 plus 7 is 39. So I checked my work, and it makes sense. The length of the side of the triangle is 13 inches. So practice these, keep trying, and good luck. Thank you for watching.